Six at six. Now at six, a fishy email sent to students. Now police say they are investigating a sextortion scheme. The warning from officers. First tonight, though, from prisoners to tourists, groups of people are helping clean up the beaches in Brevard County. They're picking up dead fish after red tide led to a huge fish kill. This is News 6 at 6. I'm Matt Austin. And I'm Lisa Bell. The nonprofit Keep Brevard Beautiful asked for help cleaning up the fish. And today, the sheriff's office chain gang joined the community effort. Eight inmates wearing masks helped clean up from Satellite Beach to Melbourne Beach. But red tide is not only affecting the beauty of the beaches, it is also affecting early voting. News 6's Jerry Askin is live at the Canova Park Clubhouse in Indian Harbor Beach. And Jerry, that location was supposed to be an early voting location. Yes, Lisa, but look how close we are to the Indian Harbor Beach. And that's why, because of recent red tide here, Brevard County election leaders are moving their early voting location from this location to a location about two miles down the road away from the beach, all to make sure voters don't get safe. And this is one of many things happening, all to make sure voters don't get sick. One of many things happening to make sure everyone is safe. It's something we're seeing all across the state of Florida, and Brevard County has seen its fair share too, even more of it this week. Dead fish washed up on the shore, in fact, lots of them. And it's all because of one thing, red tide. I'll still go to the beach, but not like in the water. And it's causing folks to be really careful and aware to avoid getting sick. We were pretty surprised the first day because we could definitely, you know, smell it when you went outside. Uh, but it, it seems to be uh, livable. You just have to stay inside. In fact, because of recent red tide here, Brevard County election officials have already moved one of its nine early voting locations from Canova Park Clubhouse here along the beach to the Satellite Beach Library about two miles away. Early voting in Brevard County begins on Saturday. It's not, it's not that much of an inconvenience. I mean, it's a nice gesture on their part trying to look out for you know, people's health. And Brevard County leaders are watching out for your health too. They're putting up these signs at beaches and parks and making sure all of us know to be careful. We're also working with the tourism department and they're working uh, with the hoteliers so that visitors that are in our area know that there are red tide conditions out there. They may experience those conditions. Yes, and back live here, Brevard County leaders say there are 72 miles of shoreline across Brevard County, so if you feel sick at any of their beaches or parks, to simply go to a different area, or an option is also to wear a mask, like me. Live in Brevard County, I'm Jerry Askin, News 6. Jerry, thank you. Florida's water problems appear to be a big issue for voters in results 2018. A new poll found the problems could be affecting Rick Scott more than Bill Nelson. St. Leo University, which is in the Tampa area, surveyed nearly 700 registered voters. Around 46 percent said they support Nelson. 38 percent support Scott. The rest were undecided or wanted another candidate. The poll also asked about key issues. 51 percent said Florida's red tide is the reason they are voting. 50% said the toxic algae bloom is another reason they are voting on November 6th. If you would like to read more about the Senate race as well as print off your sample ballot, just head to clickorlando.com slash politics. We've posted a voter's information guide for you. Our state is now the focus of the targeted terror threats. CBS News confirms the FBI is investigating if packages were mailed from Florida. A law enforcement official told CBS, quote, a lot of arrows are pointing to Florida. Meantime, more suspicious packages are now being looked at. Two packages were sent to Vice President Joe Biden's Delaware home. They were stopped at two postal facilities. Also, the FBI confirms another sent to actor Robert De Niro is similar to the crude pipe bomb sent earlier this week to at least six other prominent Democrats. The CBS Evening News with Jeff Glor will have more on this developing story after News 6 at 6. We continue to follow a traffic alert along the beach line in Orange County. Only one eastbound lane near Dallas Boulevard is open right now. The rest are closed. It's where a semi-truck crashed and burst into flames earlier today. FHB says pavers are now working to fix the road. This is video from 1030 this morning when that crash happened. Troopers tell us the driver of the semi lost control, crashed into a guardrail and flipped. That's when the truck caught fire. We're told the semi truck was loaded with wooden doors. The driver is OK.
Well, the rain is starting to clear out. Behind it, though, is the real story. That's the cooler temperatures. Let's get you right over to Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells pinpointing that Thursday night forecast. Okay, now, the big cold front is actually tomorrow. Yes. But is all we're going to be talking about in the next 24 hours. Our rain is starting to slow down a whole lot here in Central Florida for tonight. The rain we've been watching all across Orange County has kind of died out. I've got one lone echo up here in Seminole County where Kiva Springs Road picking up a touch of light rain. Farther to the north in the east from Daytona Beach into Flagler County, still some pockets of activity there, but they're not super heavy. Rainfall rate in there a little better than a tenth of an inch per hour, but not much better. Take a look at the next two hours. All the stuff up north drifts out. Little pockets of rain here. Temperatures doing okay. 70 right now in Palm Coast. That's the cool spot. 81 in Kissimmee is just about the warmest spot anywhere in our area. I will be right back. We'll pinpoint overnight lows tonight. Then I'll look at tomorrow and when the cooler air really starts to arrive. Thank you, Tom. To keep up with tonight's rain, download our free Pinpoint Weather app. Just search WKMG in your app store. A woman in DeLand is arrested, accused of locking a child with Down syndrome in a dog cage. Volusia County deputies say 39-year-old Sherlisa Hodge left the 3-year-old alone while she picked up her 6-year-old daughter from school. Deputies say DCF acted on an anonymous tip, which stated the dog cage part, but Hodge's mom says the cage part is false. That is not true. Um, there's no cage. He had a child proof by law, a child proof fence across his door. Hodges made her first appearance in court today. Her bond was reduced from $5,000 to $2,500 since she does not have a criminal record. However, she is not allowed to have contact with the child. New at 6, a warning about an email scheme targeting University of Central Florida students. So this email claims the sender recorded the students' web history and the adult sites they've visited. And if they don't play along, they will release the recordings. New 6's Nadine Yana spoke to UCF about what's being called a sextortion email. She joins us now live from the university. Nadine. Well, Matt, this scam originally popped up in August, officials say, but then it resurfaced just this weekend. The IT department saying this time the attacker is including students' own passwords in the email. Passwords they believe they got from previous data breaches, and UCF officials say for some, it looks real. I have access to all your accounts, social networks, email, browsing history accordingly of all of your contacts, files from your computer, photos, and videos. Wow. I was most struck by the adult sites that you occasionally visit. You have a very wild imagination. Okay, so yeah, obviously, I think he's obviously trying to freak people out. You can see UCF senior Ryan Lathrop is visibly shocked as he reads the email UCF officials today say is a sextortion scam targeting students on campus. Does it seem believable to you? No, um, I don't believe that at all, but I feel like people our age sometimes, I guess, are gullible but I try not to be. But UCF's information security team here at the College of Sciences say the scammer is trying to seem legitimate. You can see the email comes from a knights.ucf.edu address. And the attacker claims to have recorded webcam video and taken screenshots of the person viewing adult content. He then threatens to send those videos and images to the recipient's social media unless $900 is paid within 48 hours. I feel like he could ask for more. Personally. Why do you say that? Because um, people will pay anything to keep their life a secret. But as a criminal justice major, Lathrop sees wording in the email that shows it's a scam. Still, he's not taking any chances. That's shocking. I don't know. I would probably change my password on everything now. And so the information security team here at UCF says if you've got this email as a student to report it right away. They also released some tips like that student said to change your passwords. We're going to go over some of those tips that officials say won't even help UCF students here, but it could help anyone who goes online. Matt. Nadine Giannis, thank you. Construction's now underway at the new Boxy Park in Lake Nona. Developers telling us they hope this new concept of shipping containers will bring new entertainment options to the Orlando area. It's kind of a cool concept here. The 14 large containers were shipped here from Texas. They will now be turned into restaurants and bars, seating areas, live entertainment spaces. There's supposed to be a dog park there and much more. Businesses will rotate in and out of the space. And even the park itself could change. The shipping containers, you know, they can move around as the plans expand. 
The developer says the idea behind this space is to foster creativity and to build dreams. Well, service dogs for veterans and first responders. Not a new concept, but a local program is providing them for free. I'll show you how this trainer is getting results for those who have served our country. The details are next at 6. You're watching News 6 at 6, getting results. We will be right back. Sponsored by Florida Hospital, ranked number one in Orlando by U.S. News and World Report again. Well, service dogs for veterans and first responders. It's not a new concept. The dogs can assist with everything from visual impairments to mental disorders. But one viewer told us for him the cost was just too prohibitive. After some searching, he found someone training them for free, though. And he was grateful. He nominated her for the Getting Results Award. All right, guys, we're going to start. Everyone get in a circle. In real estate, location is everything. This is us just getting together doing our normal weekly training session. But if you're trying to train a group of service dogs. We got a big class. Make sure your dogs are sitting and watching you, okay? Then this cul-de-sac at the end of Wakefield Place. <laughs> big circle tonight. We'll just have to do. It's only been the grace of God that our neighbors haven't complain. The improvised training area provides refuge and remedy for veterans and first responders. This is a great crowd. I love them. I love my veterans. <laughs> it's all part of the Florida chapter of Paws of War. We set you up with a dog that needs a home. We find a veteran that needs a better life and we save both ends of the leash by putting them together. Leading the charge? No, they call me Gunny. I, I don't know what that means, but I hope it's good. She, she's a drill sergeant on steroids. Do I have a bunch of Marines here? What's going on? Program director Lauren Driscoll. Seriously? Because she's dealing with a human and a dog. Once a week, veterans like Willie Branch. Come on, girl. Along with his German Shepherd, Kyrie. Stretch your stuff, girl. Meet for free service dog training. <laughs> That's me in the radio room. I still look good. <laughs> As a young man, Branch spent 12 years in the military. Boot camp, I did three tours of Vietnam. He returned with scrapbooks full of memories. I survived, I made it home. And like many, an underlying case of PTSD. I knew I had anger issues. Always at his side. He's my friend. Kyrie. Aren't you girl? He says he's grateful for the training, nominating Driscoll for the Getting Results Award. I wanna see Lauren get the credit that she should get. Yeah, she is definitely getting results. They did something so fantastic for us. We need to do something fantastic for them. Thank you, guys. That's what keeps me going. All righty. Wow. What a cool lady, right? As you saw, weather can often cancel those sessions. Driscoll says she hopes to move her training out of the street into a permanent facility. She's hoping maybe someone, maybe you, maybe someone watching, will come forward with some indoor space that could possibly work for them as well. If you know someone like her, Tell me about them. Go to clickorlando.com, fill out the nomination form under the Getting Results section, and it goes right to my producer, Paul Giorgio, and I's email, and that's how we select them. It's got to be someone out there with some space that they can I use. I sure hope yeah. so, because and that's a big group out there. It is. Nice to see them getting results. That's right. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells joining us now. Uh, some nice, much-needed rain today. Depends on where you are mm -hmm. as to who's getting it. Take a look at what's going on. We'll talk about the coastal showers lingering into the night tonight. Some of you up north are getting quite a bit through Volusia County, Flagler County, across the interior. Not as much, but there will be another shot at rain tomorrow. A cold front is on the way for your Friday. That's going to kick up showers tomorrow, see, between about 11 and about 7 p.m. Come the weekend, much, much cooler. Overnight lows are going to be in the 40s up north and in the 50s, even in Orange County. Radar tonight, here's what I'm talking about. Look, across the interior, much of the rain just died. Didn't do a whole lot for most of you, but there have been little pockets of rain that were impressive around Wakiva Springs. That shower just died. And from Daytona Beach into Flagler County, pretty decent rain. Still going on at this hour. The stuff that rolled through earlier from Flagler Beach has kind of died out going up north. But these lingering pockets here are heavy enough to really help you out on a night when your yard might get a little more. Take a look at what's happening for future radar the next two hours from the villages all the way down to Orlando. Not much. Heaviest rain is still to the north. Almanac page for today, the overnight low this morning was 68. The daytime high hit 83 degrees. That's dead on normal where we're supposed to be this time of year. In Daytona Beach, it's kind of been, well, an ugly day. A lot of rain. Temperature reading here at news time already down to 72. We've been flat there and stuck there for hours on end. Wind is from the east at 7 miles per hour. In Orlando, we're seeing the sunset totally different across the interior 
than on the coast. 77 in Orlando, 80 in Melbourne, 73 in Ocala, 76 from Leesburg to the Villages and still very warm, 81 in Kissimmee. Come take a look. By 8 p.m. to 9 o'clock tonight, much of the rain is over. Through the day tomorrow, we'll watch for a frontal zone to arrive from the north-northwest. By about 7 o'clock tomorrow night, most of the rain is done. By 8 p.m., this is all we have left. From the south side of Lucia County to Seminole County, a touch of light rain, but nothing huge. Into the night tomorrow night, it all clears out, and the cooler air funnels in on Saturday. What does this mean for tonight? Well, it means coastal showers are still out there. Still cloudy in most spots. I'm going to call the overnight low tonight 70 with wind from the north, northeast 5 to 10. Here's tomorrow. Your forecast brought to you by Dell Air Heating and Air Conditioning. The front is approaching, so a decent start to the day. We warm to 84 by noon. Some of you could hit 86, 87. Then the rain kicks up as the front comes through and our temperatures begin to drop. Here's the week ahead. Daytime high tomorrow hits 87 with a 50% chance of rain. Low tomorrow night 67, but look at the weekend. Saturday's high is only 78 with sunshine taking over in the afternoon. The low Saturday night into Sunday's 58. Sunday's high 79. Monday 82, a reinforcing shot of cooler air for Tuesday. The high of 77, and even one week from today, the high is only 84. Mm. That's a good run. Mm -hmm. That weekend is perfect. Good run. Thank you, Tom. Local man who beat an 83-year-old woman to death is raising questions about the death penalty. Why lawyers say he does not deserve death row because of his childhood. That's ahead on News 6 at 7. Also, those two little boys are so happy. And that, to me, is what means everything. Big surprise for a single mom whose family lost everything they owned in a fire. How her landlord got results and gave them a new start. And Star Wars Land is coming to Hollywood Studios, but that is going to mean a big change for everyone arriving by car. The reason, all new at 7.